grasping this this morning. But see, I'll pull you into this thing. This is not one of those deals where I'm just going to get the best that God has for me. And I'm going to be like, well, you had your chance. I did everything that you can. You're just on your own. No, nah, baby, I'm getting ready to pull you by your weave. I'm going to pull you by your boots. I'm going to pull you by your shirt. I'm going to pull you by your jeans. You're going to get this concept. So tie your weave on tight. Put the glue on tight because I'm going to be snatching. We coming into this thing together. Because see, I want to do the best that God has for me. And I want the best around me. I don't seem to understand what I'm talking about. They can do that all they want to, but I'm still getting ready to replace that. Because I got the best coming and we gonna lock it down so the best can be up in here. And then the next time that they come, they'll come up in here and say, oh Lord, the Holy Ghost got this place up in here. But let me tell you, I'm telling you, see, they ain't gonna get back up in here. That's another issue. We, 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 we got something for you. We got something for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he wants you to do something, but oftentimes when God wants you to do something, there has to be a death. There has to be a death. I'm not talking about a death of a person. In this particular case, yes, Moses was dead. But it was a, it's, a, it's an illustration for us now, all of these thousands of years later. It's not the death of a person, but there has to be the death of a dead thing. Somebody understands what I'm talking about. The scripture even says, it says, after the death of Moses, the servant of God, God spoke to Joshua, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. All right, you look back at this part of the scripture. Moses has done all of these things, all of these great miracles. The scripture even says that there's not another prophet that, that Israel ever saw that was like Moses. And Moses did what he did. He did it, the scripture even says that Moses did what he did. He did it in front of Egypt. He did it in front of Pharaoh. He did it in front of Pharaoh's officers. He did it in front of the Israelites. Everything he did, everybody saw it. So you have the Israelites that had the great prophet, arguably even called the first great pastor, and, and had, had thousands upon thousands of people that he was shepherding and leading and guiding and praying over, people that was frustrating him, people that was making him hit rocks because folks won't walk. Somebody understand what I'm saying? Moses had a temper tantrum. Somebody understand what I'm saying? Some, somebody was jumping on one of his people. He jumped on a man. Before we know it, he had killed a man. But guess what? God not through with you yet. You might have killed somebody with your words, but God not through with you yet. You might have said the wrong thing at the wrong time in the wrong place, but God not through with you yet. But God can still use Moses who had a temper tantrum, turn around and jumped on a man so bad he killed the man. Realize he made a mistake and buried the man in the sand. It's not quite like the movie where the movie said that 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 he did all these different things and Pharaoh kicked him out. And then he went out to the desert. He ran out in the desert because he was running for life. He killed an Egyptian and somebody saw him and they were fixing to come after him. How many of you have done something where you felt like you needed to run away? You needed to get away. This ain't working. These folks ain't. These folks gonna come after me. This ain't. This ain't. This situation ain't cool. Y'all know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's getting a little hot around here. I'm gonna have to run. I'm gonna have to run away. Oh, you did a problem. You 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 had a problem and you didn't face the problem. You just wanted to get away from it. Anybody ever done that? Well, praise the Lord. I love preaching to redeemites. Y'all just so perfect. <laughs> God, when you when you got something that you got to do, God has put something on you that you must do what must need what needs to be done, then there has to be a death. Not necessarily the death of a person, as in the case of Joshua and Moses, but it's the death of something in your life that you've been holding on to. When Moses died, said Moses was well over a hundred years old when he passed away. And in the scripture, actually the scripture prior to this, at the, at the end of the prior ch uh, chapter, at the end of the prior book, it actually says that, that the Israelites mourned and cried for Moses for 30 days. It said they cried for Moses for 30 days. Now I know that death is a tough thing to have to deal with. And you have to mourn. You have to grieve. In fact, it's healthy that you do so. I'm not sitting there trying to say that you act like it didn't happen. But they had gotten to the point where they were crying for 30 days. And after 30 days, God spoke to Joshua and said, look, Moses is dead. He ain't coming back. All 
things that he did were great for a time. Mm -hmm. But he's done. Mm -hmm. He's finished. What God is trying to tell you is not necessarily that a person needs to die, but it's some things that you are doing, some habits that you have, some thoughts that you think, some patterns that you are going down that are dead, and God is trying to say, you know what, that stuff ain't working no more. What you have to realize is that Moses was there for a time to get Pharaoh to release the Israelites. Right. Now that the Israelites were released, they had to go in and possess the land. Yeah. To do that, there were some occupants that were already in the land. And to do that, the miracles weren't going to get rid of those people. Those people had to be put out. Mm -hmm. That's right. Some fighting was going to have to happen. All right. And he picked Joshua because not only was Joshua, Joshua a godly man and Moses' servant, but Joshua was a, was a fighter. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Joshua was a warrior. Joshua was a man that knew how to go in and kill some folk if some folk needed to be killed. Y'all see what I'm saying? Some enemies of God. Y'all see what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you is that there's some habits that you have that you need to uproot, kill, and get rid of because they're dead and they're not working in your life anymore. If you continue to do what you used to do and you're not getting any good results, it's time for you to change something. That ain't what I'm saying. That ain't what I'm saying. You better find a way to get on your knees and work that thing out. But I'm talking about stuff that pertains to you. I'm talking about, listen, there's a whole lot of other things that you can change in you before you decide to go change in somebody else. Before you decide that you're getting ready to kick your husband out, or you're done with your wife and you're going to find you another one while you still got that one. Somebody understand what I'm saying? Before you decide to do that, let's make sure you clean up what's going on on the inside of you. Let's make sure you, you are, are going by the right phrases and, and surrounding yourself with the right environment. Oh, glory. Somebody understands what I'm talking about here today. And so there's got to be a death. So what happens here is that Moses died and Moses was great, but Moses was good for a time. Joshua was needed now because the task was different. How many of you have been guilty of holding on to something and before you know it, the situation has changed and you still back holding on to something 10 years ago, five years ago, 10 months ago. Listen, it's not always a matter of 10 and 10, 20 years ago. Nowadays, things move fast. Something that you did last week may not work anymore. Oh, glory be It was good for that week. There's no need for me to be carrying around. Last week it rained two or three days in a row. I had to find my umbrella. My umbrella blew up. It, 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 it broke. I had to go get another one. I said, oh, Lord, I'm just going to get wet. I don't need an umbrella today. Y'all see what I'm saying? Some things you have to say, you know what? That were good for a time. And you have to have the courage to do what must be done. If you are looking to be your best you in 2019, how many of you are going to do what must be done? Uproot some old things. Uproot some old habits. If you take the same way to work and you know you're getting caught by that train every single time, it might be time for you to do something a little bit different. Somebody understand what I'm talking about. God is a spirit. He needs you to go. Oh, glory be to God. If everything was lined up just right, then why would you need God? Now me, I'm a planner. Y'all heard me say it before. I'm the guy that plans spontaneous time on vacation. Right? I'm the guy that says, we're going to do all of these things up until 2 o'clock, but from 2 until 2.18, we're going to be spontaneous. <laughs> but at 2.19, then we got to be here. We back on. Right? Right? Amen. Amen. So that means everything is perfect. And then I'm a plan A kind of guy. What am I talking about? When plan A doesn't work, I don't do well. I don't need a plan B because I work so hard on plan A. Well, that's the most ridiculous thing in the world. And I've had to learn it the hard way. Because you do so much to have plan A, and God will come in and say, you know what? It's not your plan anyway. You come in with plan A and you got your timing and God's saying, you see, that's your problem. You think it's on your timing. It's not on your timing. It's on my timing. And all my timing requires is your obedience. Uh, your understanding is not required. You don't have to get all the details of my plan. I said go, so that means you need to go. Get up, get going. Help us, God. Help us. 
for you to get up and go get you something new. If you don't feel like you're going to the best places, then guess what? It's time for you to change where you're going. It's time for you to do the best, whatever it is. God is calling you to be the best version of yourself. You have to fill in the blanks. I've learned this. God is not always that big on details. Maybe he is to you. God is like, okay, get up and get going. He told Joshua that you are getting ready to possess all of this land. I'm giving you every square inch of land that you set your foot on. Joshua was probably thinking, all right, praise the Lord, but wait a minute, hold up. There's some people already over there, God. That land ain't just sitting barren. As a matter of fact, it's nations of people over there. More than one. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to send some spies out to take a look at that land. And when I do, we'll see what we see. But if you want me to possess this land that I later have found out got giants on it. There's some giants up in that land. Oh, somebody understands what I'm talking about. Y'all seen the DVD. Y'all saw the movie. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm going to say read the movie. See the movie as opposed to read it. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Although I don't know that there's a movie called Joshua. But you get the point. God is not big on details. He told you he was going to give it to you. Didn't really matter who's already in there. It didn't matter, matter what it already looks like. It didn't matter who occupies it. If God told you that you were going to be the best version of yourself, guess what? There's room for you. If God told you you were going to be the best speaker, guess what? There's room for you. If God told you that you were going to be the best minister, guess what? There's room for you. You don't have to worry about somebody. See, the thing is, is that best in our minds has to be superlative. Best in God's meaning that there can be several best. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. We can coexist together and all be the best. Somebody else says what I'm talking about. Best doesn't mean that I'm better and you not. And somebody else is better than me. Best by God's standard. He's the, God doesn't do things like we do it. There can be several bests. It's not the best version of you. The best version of yourself is going to push you. The best version of yourself is going to get you out of your comfort zone. The best version of yourself is going to make you so uncomfortable with whatever you believe that God has told you that you're going to have to rely on him to make it happen. 